Welcome to Odd Texas Football. I'm Bobby Burt. We've got a special for you. We, we thought we were done for the weekend, but Steve Sarkeesian said, no, 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 no. Just when I thought I was out for the weekend, he brings me back in by way of Elijah Bo Barnes, uh, commits to the Longhorns. Uh, Barnes uh, selects Texas over a host of others, Jerry. Uh, we yeah. had him on the show earlier this week. Young man, linebacker out of Dallas's Skyline High School. Uh, just a tremendous, tremendous player. Uh, and could be a, one of the centerpieces of this Longhorns uh, 2025 recruiting class. Yeah, he was on with us uh, Wednesday night for the Longhorn live stream, and he was wearing his Texas gear, and there he is playing running back and linebacker. Obviously, uh, uh, there he is making the tackle there at linebacker against, uh, I believe that's against Cedar Hill there. But, um, yeah, it, people were saying, hey, is he going to commit live on the show? Is he commit live on the show? Look, we've been saying Texas had a big lead. Um, we knew it was coming. He was one of those guys we referenced that could move up the timeline uh, from right before the season. Uh, but a huge pickup. Johnny Nansen's first commitment at Texas, by the way, and that's a good one. Um, a, a guy that uh, had a lot of attention from the Texas staff, him and his parents, on Saturday, April 6th. Uh, Johnny Nansen gave him the Texas kind of a deep, not the defensive playbook, but a notebook. Uh, so uh, they could they could conversate back and forth there. He could take notes in the uh, – uh, position meetings, but uh, look, Elijah Barnes, how good is Elijah Barnes? I mean, let's start with this. He's almost 6'3", he's 230 pounds. He ran 10.96 FAT, fully automatic time, 100 meters. When I was there at Waxahachie last Wednesday at the uh, district track meet. Uh, so that's how good he is physically. Long arms, probably 79, 80 inch wingspan, 10 inch hands around there. A uh, lot comes from a family of linebackers. His dad played inside linebacker at Dallas Samuel in New Mexico. But in January, when you saw followed what coaches were going where to see what prospects, okay? Steve Sarkeesian, Ryan Day, Mike Norvell. I mean, we can keep going here. All stopped by Dallas Skyline um, to see Elijah Bo Barnes in person to try to make sure they got him to campus. Uh, Elijah Barnes was scheduled to be at AM this weekend. Uh, no, those visits aren't happening. He's got Texas June 21st through 23rd. He had been – to Ohio State recently saw the Ohio State campus. He'd been to a couple other places in January as well, but a huge win for the uh, Texas Longhorns. There you see Elijah Barnes playing some running back as well. Yeah, I, I just I get it. I get the sense we talked about this. Texas going big game hunting. Uh, yeah, you mentioned all those big names, uh, Jerry, that uh, were uh, that uh, went by Skyline High School. It this this recruiting class has a certain feel to it. And this is one of the reasons why, uh, you know, they are, I don't want to say they're selecting, but, and, and then going after certain players, but I get the feeling that they are kind of just, they're, they're being very, very selective, uh, including uh, a guy like Bo Barnes, who it, frankly is one of the top linebackers in the country. Uh, you mentioned all of his accolades, et cetera. Uh, my, my takeaway on this is, what does this do for the other linebackers in the class? Yeah, uh, we, lo we love the fact that he's a part of it. But are they going to take Riley Pejan? Jonathan Cunningham was just on campus yesterday. Um, it is amazing to me, Jerry, uh, just exactly how recruiting is going for them right now. They're they're. I, I don't want to get it back to oh, they're in the Mac Brown era quite yet, if that makes sense. Where they literally were. But Sark is such a different recruiter than Mac. Even um, he's not, you know, he's not necessarily as stubborn, if that makes sense. In some yep. ways, yet he's even more stubborn than Mac in other ways. And uh, I'm, I'm not so sure that that Sark's way doesn't work a, a heck of a lot better this day and age. Yeah, no, I, I think it does. And the one other thing I will say about Elijah, he's a great fit at the University of Texas and with Steve Sarkeesian's culture. He's a guy that Sark will be able to put out in front of the microphone one day. He's that level guy for me. He is he's that Anthony Hill level uh, human being, student athlete, um, uh, football player at the University of Texas. I mean, it's he's such an impressive guy. I sat down with him at Skyline uh, for a few minutes. I just couldn't have been more impressed with Elijah. I watched him at a track practice, and we sat down and talked for about 10, 15 minutes. And I've seen him a couple of other times uh, after that, but such an impressive such an impressive human being uh, to talk to. But, yeah, uh, Bobby, I, I, look, that's what comes with, you know, 
winning the Big 12 on the way to the SEC, getting in the college football playoff, um, I, you know, having all these guys that are about to be drafted, guys winning national awards. I mean, Tavondre Sweat wins national awards, right? I mean, guys are winning awards. They're making – there'll be guys in the preseason All-American team. There's going to be guys in the 25 mock draft, multiple guys in the first round. Guys, it, it, I'll tell you another thing that's crazy, Bobby, is what really clicks and hits in recruiting for me is when guys, three players off of Alabama's team that pl- lost a heartbreaker to Michigan in, in, in a college football playoff game, transfer to Texas. You know, look, that, that says a lot. And these aren't guys that are just coming to, fill a need. You're yeah, talking about guys who, who are going to be NFL draft picks and guys who are going to start play a lot of games. So uh, Texas has got it all going uh, in recruiting right now. LL said 6'2", 220, and 10'9". Actually, he was 230, I'm pretty sure, when he ran that time. Uh, so 6'2 and a half, 230, 10'9'6". Yeah. I mean, he's been consistent 11'1 to 11 flat guy and then 10'9'6", uh, which is crazy because here's the great thing for Elijah. He leaves high school – as a sub 1100 meter guy, because that's the last meet of his life. He's, he's an early graduate uh, from Dallas skyline next year where he plays his linebackers coach is Peter Jenkins, <laughs> so, former Texas linebacker. So, um, so th- there you go. I mean, he plays for a couple longhorns. Christian Scott is on that staff on defense as well. Uh, so, uh, Elijah Barnes made himself, made his family proud that any a lot of former Texas players happy at Dallas Skyline, too. <laughs> That's awesome stuff. Uh, Jerry, the Longhorns now at six commitments. Uh, so they're doing some work on defense right now. Uh, that's one of the good things. Derek Weiser uh, comes in and then uh, says the hook'em uh, for young Elijah Bo Barnes. What, what are your thoughts on where this defensive class is now headed? Because, frankly, they are – I mean, they're they're it's pretty stout right now, early. Yeah, no, I, I think so. And look, the defensive line. If we just put out an on TexasFootball.com. Not a better time to go over there, by the way. On TexasFootball.com, become an OG member. Uh, I just put up an updated official visitors list. There's 39 players on that right now, and that doesn't count Jordan Davison and and DeCorey Moore, who have dates, but they've yet to announce them publicly, right? So Texas is really over 40 official visitors right now. And when you look at that defensive class, I mean, Riley Pettijan, uh, the other four-star linebacker in the state of Texas, really talented player out of McKinney. He's scheduled to be at Texas for the spring game on the 20th and officially visit June 14th through 16th, right? Uh, the, the edge position, Lance Jackson committed all, all in this class, along with Elijah Barnes. I mean, Lance Jackson may have pushed his way to a five-star, borderline five-star uh, prospect. Brandon Brown, I think, is a top 100 prospect in America. I mean, so I think the three defensive guys, Texas has committed right now. They're all top 100 prospects in America in this class. I, you know, I don't know where everybody has them ranked ranked right now, but I'll go on 20 plus years in this business and do it. Put being part of national rankings teams. Those three guys are elite, elite defensive prospects in the country. And and you know, you really look at it. And the other edge guys, along with Lance Jackson, that are officially visiting big time players, top. 200 level kids in the country, maybe one of those a top 50 level kid in the country. You look at interior D line, multiple guys have official visits scheduled now. Josiah Sharma, Myron Charles, June 14th through 16th. Uh, some there's some talent coming in as far as official visits getting set up for Texas on the defensive front. Uh, then the secondary, I mean, you know, that's the position. Dorian Brew, that official visit hasn't been announced yet, so that'll be another one. You have Cade Phillips. Uh, coming in. Uh, Jonah Williams, who I think will officially visit Texas. So that vis- visitor list is going to continue to expand. And it's really going to expand more defensive guys than offensive guys, because there's a lot of offensive players that have already scheduled their official visits. Uh, Texas still has about four, five, six defensive players that I think will add to that group. You were pretty close to uh, Elijah during this recruiting process, his family. Uh, you talked to him a lot, went up to Skyline yep. a couple different times to see him. Uh, anything that strike you about them making a decision earlier than some other people did, maybe? You know, no, that's uh, when I put out the percentages on uh, Monday after the weekend visit, I believe he was as high as I had on there. I mean, that was one you just had a feeling uh, that he was coming off his timeline of before the season, because I think this about uh, Elijah Barnes and I think this about the way his family thinks the value, of the leadership, the value in leadership. If you know where you're going, one, this is part of being a leader, too. If you know where you're going to go, then why play around with the other people? 
right, and, and keep that hope alive. If you know where you're going, you're going to go be a leader of a class. That's Elijah Barnes. That's what he is. And I think that's the way his family thinks. Uh, his father, obviously, former inside linebacker, he probably made the calls at New Mexico, right? I mean, so th there's some leadership thought to these guys. And the other thing is when you find your fit uh, a, a, as an a, as a football player and academically um, and, and you know where you're going to go, then, you know, everybody doesn't have to run out that June timeline. A lot of kids are. Over 80 percent of guys will. Uh, but it also speaks to – here's this. It also speaks to this, Bobby. Um, now that Texas has won and they are back, let's just say they're back, there's guys that will adjust their timelines because it does become a little bit of musical chairs. So as a domino like this falls, Ricky Stewart fell Saturday, Elijah Barnes falls Friday, a couple other dom dominoes start falling uh, for the Texas class. Guys move off that timeline. I think you'll see a little bit more of that as we move along. That's big news. Elijah Bo Barnes commits to University of Texas. Uh, Jerry, you, you've you got to get to Austin tomorrow because they have another recruiting weekend and then the spring game the following weekend. I mean, do you think you're talking about guys coming off their timeline? Is there anybody else out there that you're thinking that might that might happen with or – is it, are we in wait and see mode a little bit uh, right now for the Longhorns? Yeah, so I think the uh, <clears throat> the spring game is is a big one. Uh, do a couple of kids who maybe didn't have family members with them on the April, April 6th visit, so they come back to the spring game with family members, right? I mean, I think that's an important part of it. I could see, look, Texas has 10 or 11 offensive linemen at this point scheduled for official visits. Um, the chances that Texas – doesn't get any of those guys off their timeline, I'd be surprised that. That doesn't mean it happens next week. That doesn't mean it happens in three weeks, right? But we're talking about off a July, August timeline. Yeah, I'd be surprised. I I, I think there will be a couple, three guys that move off that timeline. Maybe take an official visit or two, then uh, don't finish up maybe the entire May, June official visit process. Okay, I want to go back to his video. We'll finish up this uh, you know, kind of impromptu live with the uh, – Big news, Elijah Bo Barnes uh, committing the Longhorns. Let's go back to a little bit of his highlight tape. And, Jerry, uh, tell us what you see uh, as a middle linebacker here. Yeah, so I, I see a guy that, you know, when you move that quick, fast, and decisive, you have instincts. One, you're reading plays. You have the ability to, to uh, have recognition, read recognition, and react to that. Uh, but I see a guy that has a frame to weigh 245 pounds, haven't seen him in person. Right. I mean, he's a guy that has instincts. He's smart. He can he's going to be able to he's going to be able to wear the headset one day if you want him to. He's that type of player. He also has versatility. Uh, uh, you know, he's a guy that you could play off the edge a little bit, too. He's got that frame. He's got that length. He's got that versatility. But you also see guy Bobby, a guy that flows to the football really well, doesn't waste a lot of uh, energy. And he, he as you say, when he hits people, they go down. So, I mean. When he hits you, that it plays over, right? I mean, um, it, what's interesting to me, too, about Elijah Barnes is, and this doesn't get talked about now because he retired, but I'm here to tell you, uh, from everything I was told, this was one of the top three inside linebackers on the board for Nick Saban in this class when he retired. Interesting. That should make Texas I, I, fans feel good as well. Look, here's here's the reality. They're gonna have to have they're gonna have to play with some sturdier linebackers in the SEC yes. than maybe they played with in the Big 12. I, I take nothing away from the guys that played in the Big 12 for Texas. Jalen Ford, DeMarvian Overshone, et cetera. They need guys that that have that thickness through the chest and the and the rear uh, that can actually hit people. And like I like you said, when they tackle them, they go down. Yeah. There's not a question, right? And um, I think that the, I see that. I love the intangibles that you're talking about with Elijah Bo Barnes. That's just great stuff, Jerry. Uh, and uh, someone that uh, I think the Longhorn fans should be really, really excited about that. All right. That's going to do it for right now. OK, we may come back with a special on Elijah Bo Barnes. We're going to try to get him on air uh, so he, can, you guys can meet or re-meet uh, one of the top uh, prospects in the country who is now a Texas Longhorn, I hope. As one person put in this uh, chat today, I hope that this makes your margaritas taste a little better on Friday night, guys. All right. Congratulations to Elijah Bo Barnes. For uh, Jerry Hamilton, I'm Bobby Burton. Elijah, hook him, buddy.